It's another beautiful Sunday again, and I'm very glad to be here, and I'm sure you are so much glad as well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day you have made. We thank you for the privilege to be here, to learn at your feet. We thank you for your word that you bring to us today. And we ask, Lord, let this word, let this prune us, let this wash us, let it cleanse us, let it groom us in the name of Jesus. We pray for your servant that you would use. We ask for grace for him today that we speak from your heart, oh God. He will speak your word to us. He will speak into our life, speak into our season in the name of Jesus. You will grace him with everything that will be required for him to deliver your word to us today in the name of Jesus. And at the end of today, Lord, we will not remain the same again. We ask, Lord, for everything we're going to hear. We ask for grace to carry them out in the name of Jesus. We say, let it be a token, even as we journey with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for hearing us. We thank you for listening. We thank you, Lord, for all you're going to do in our lives today. We receive your word in the name of Jesus today. Let it illuminate us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it brighten our walk in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. We give you all the glory, Lord, for in Jesus' name, we have prayed. And the pretty of Alala Kebala has seized the men and the most of the day the higher. And the being a non Susan Prada be at the buyer. Bellelo Susan Prenega de Boshi, Madada, Negado Suvelentia, Tata Brana Nata, Etelecatia, Tatayana Brana Haketa Balahasia, Ashima la Cata, La La Lagada Balabahasi, Frenen and Nana Mosusa, Asima Dada Dada Dabala Cabalia, Gadagada Balabala Bosu, Rane Valalatia, Ati Brana Nana Nagada Boshu, Bene de Negada Mosusa, Rana Natia, Etobosia, Etobosia, Etobosia. Kelly Kretu Sebelente la Lagada Bahashi, Manana Hate Talabala Hasia, Zefri and on Susa Malakati, Renan and Negadega de Mosuba la Keba, Ejemele de Mosusa Branta, Nagadega de Mosia, Asi Flavalagada Basi, Venelo Susa Brenega de Mosia, Akalabrana Nanama, Shisha Malakatia, Malagada Basia. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Et a Bria no Susa Valala Hasia, the Nagada Bahasia. the God of heaven and the earth. Kabio siu, Kabio siu. Kabio siu, you are the God of heaven and the earth. Kabio God. 
Amen. We thank the Lord for a beautiful atmosphere of worship. Um, thank the Lord for His presence that has gone ahead of us, that is with us, because we believe that whenever we gather together, whether virtually or physically, the Lord is always with us. Um, yeah, um, He's always with us. Two or three are gathered in agreement, um, which is the first thing, because we can be physically gathered, but we are not in agreement. And of course, that would mean the Spirit of God is not there. But we have, if we are agreeing our hearts in our different locations uh, for this virtual service, um, then we know that the Lord's presence and the Lord's authority is with us. Um, today, we'll be talking about praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. I want us to have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we bless you this morning. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, we bless you today. We appreciate your love and mercy over our lives, and we thank you for your grace and the ability of God to the privilege to see into your word, the privilege to inspire our faith, the privilege to um, stir up our faith and to give also God the, the energies and the impartation of grace that is required of God to move step by step with you. The one who will always be in step with you at every time. Uh, the desire in our heart to God is not for me, like for example, preaching me as a, taking myself as an primary example, it's not just to preach an excellent message or to stand sound very intelligent and very put together. Oh Lord, my desire, oh God, is that your word, oh God, will be as pure as it should be. Your word should be as, as um, sincere, as straightforward as it should be. Your word should reach and bless and meet the needs of men. The Bible talked about the grace of God that has appeared teaching men to deny ungodliness and to follow Christ. Lord, the desire in my heart of God is as your word will come across this way to whoever hears it. Uh, it will meet the needs. It will inspire faith. It will stir up faith. It will, it will, it will quicken um, or communicate life. Um, every operation of the Spirit of God is required of God according to the seasons of the lives of your children and of our corporate being. Lord, May your words to may your word today and every day, O oh God, as His priest on this pulpit, be Lord, in a blessing to each of us, both the speaker and the hearers, will be doers of your work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, today we'll be talking about praying the spirit. Praying the spirit. Uh, and um Someone wanted to ask, what is this prayer in the Spirit? What is this prayer in the Spirit? The Bible first of all started by saying that God is a Spirit. This is Jesus speaking that God is a Spirit and that everyone that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if God is not man, if God is not in the flesh, if God is not, if Jesus has already given us the description that God is a Spirit, that means every of our activities, you know, must spring from the Spirit. Uh, every other, every of, our, of our activities uh, must spring from the Spirit or must be directed towards the, the, uh, the Spirit, you know, or God as a Spirit who is the object of our, of our fellowship, the object of our worship, the object of our submission, the object of our, of our life. Uh, so praying the Spirit, you know, fits perfectly because um, if we are to pray, <laughs> if we are to pray, if we are to worship a spirit, if we are to worship a spirit being there, we must be able to relate, you know, in the spirit. So, so the New Testament began to lay a groundwork. Actually, from the Old Testament, there was already a groundwork as to how, you know, we are to um, um, propagate that life of praying the spirit or propagate that quality or that nature or that, yeah, that nature of prayer you know, that is praying, in, that is called praying in the Spirit. You know, that people will pray. There are different nature of um, types of prayer. Uh, we're not talking about types of prayer uh, or, or uh, as, as known theologically. Um, but we're just talking about the, 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 the privilege that the, new, that the new creation man has, you know, or the new covenant man has. You know, which is a which is a function of the avenue that the new creation man has, you know, to communicate with 
the with the with 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 the, with the, the giver of life, the 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 one that procured redemption, that procured that new creation of life for for him, is through the avenue of prayer. Very strong example is in the, um, of the of the restoration of of praying the spirits. Uh, I think we cannot we cannot uh, excuse the the um, the events of 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 Acts of, of the Acts of the beginning at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, which is the beginning of which is the birth of the of the early church. Of course, Jesus Christ had moved over the surface of the earth for 33 years in his earthly ministry. He had cultured them in the ways of God and the ways of the, of the new covenant that was to come that he had brought in his new life. And he told them that, uh, see, my stay with you is limited. The three years is not enough. <laughs> the three years will not cut it all. But I'm going to send someone else who's going to continue, you know, from where I stopped. Uh, this one it will span the entirety of your life. And is the comforter, is the Holy Spirit, is the counsel, is the help, is your advocates. He will do different operations and work. And one of those is, you know, which is, is that he would, he would, he would help you to pray. It would help you to pray. Um, and God just quite demonstrated that, you know, to them, you know, by releasing the Spirit from heaven on the day of, on the day of Pentecost. Of course, the day of Pentecost was a regular feast in Israel, a regular ceremonial feast, you know, that they have been celebrating from the time of the law. Uh, from the time of the law, they had, they had the Passover, three broad feasts, they had the Passover, they had the Pentecost, and they had the fullness of the tabernacle. But the day of the infilling, of the, of the, of the outpour of the Spirit, rather, you know, was on, fell on that day. Pentecost feast, and that's what we refer to it as the Pentecost. Pentecostal, you know, then today we have the, the Pentecostal move. Uh, we also have that move in also in modern history of life when we can say that uh, the, the, the Azusa Street revival was a restoration of, of, um, of, of, the, of the pray of the operations of the praying of, of in the spirit, you know, whether of, of the gifts of, of the spirit. Or the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit, of of of, of everything was about it was about the restoration of a life in the spirit. Believers became aware again of the operations of the magnanimity and the and the and the and the fervency of a life in the spirit. So we see in Acts, in Acts, uh, when in Acts two one to four, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and they all appeared on on them, clothing tongues of, as a fire, and it sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Of course, this event, if we um, uh, this was a very obvious, obvious um, uh, uh, event. It wasn't hidden from the eyes of men. The Bible says that cloven tongues of fire sat upon them. People saw, they all saw that cloven tongues of fire, there was a symbol on their forehead that showed that the Spirit of God had risen. Now, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God usually didn't, didn't used to rest. It came and left. Apart from the prophets who had, who had, who had a better residency of the Spirit, apart from the prophets, you know, and then, you know, but, but, but someone like, you could see like a Psalm saying, the Spirit of God will come on in and will go, you know, but someone like, like, like a Moses, you know, was a prophet, more like they had a measure of the residence of the Spirit, but the Spirit of the living God, I didn't really, really, really rested on the face of the earth, but Joel, Prophet Joel started speaking from Joel, you know, that there will come a time when the Spirit of God will be poured out upon the face of the earth. It will be poured upon all flesh. He said, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. You know, that is what the Lord will do in that day. And that day began from that, from the day of Pentecost, you know, as celebrated, you know, by the first disciples of Christ. So that's, that's we can say that is the beginning of, of, of praying in the Spirit. Uh, because we see people, we see denominations and theological discussions these days where they, they try to excuse this operation of the Spirit and try to say, well, this happened to the first apostles, so it doesn't happen again. Uh, this, uh, it won't happen again because the canon has been closed. Well, the canon closed means the scripture has been closed, so that operation ended. I, I would want to mention 
uh, I don't want to go into name calling of of of, of um, different um, um, religious movements, you know, and that and the different uh, opinions they have on on um, on 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 praying the spirit or the operations of the spirit. I don't think there's need for for name calling, but but but. But Peter really helped us that day by saying that <laughs> um, our brother in church, Pastor Shea, was preaching not too long ago about, you know, um, mentioning the issue, the, 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 the circumstance of, 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 um, of um, Anna, you know, Anna, yeah, Anna praying in the temple and early morning in the temple and Eli looking at Eli with Eli looking at Anna with the muttering of her mouth, you know, a mouth movement, but no audible words coming, you know, accused her initially of being drunk of wine that early. And, um, and, um, uh, but of course, she later explained that no, I was, I was having a heart communication with the Lord. And that is very, very true and potent that we can have heart communications, heavy, sincere heart communications with the Lord. And our mouth may only be moving, you know, and, uh, uh, there may be movement in our, of our lips, but uh, but uh, we may not be audible. But we are speaking to a God, you know, and that is that is very very possible. But this one, this one is the is the other aspect of it because that very day, the same thing, the same accusations. These people were also accused, you know, the disciples, the first disciples, because they were speaking loud, they were making a lot of sound. And people would say, ah, these guys, people that were observing, said these guys are drunk. But Peter said, no, we are not drunk, as you see. <laughs> this is but the third hour of the day. The third hour of the day, we cannot be this drunk at third hour of the day. What you see is what was prophesied by the prophet. So this is just to justify you, you know, that praise loud in church, that in the spirit of God moved the favor. I know you, you can pray loud. Uh, you can also be accused that you are drunk, but you are not drunk with wine. You are rather drunk with the spirit. The spirit of God can move you to pray so loud, so very, very exuberant, so very, very, you know, energetic and, and, and physically manifesting. And that is okay as long as the spirit of God that is moving you. You know, the spirit of God can also move you, you know, and it's just a heart walking, you know, a heart um, a connection and, um, and that is also potent. Just be, the major thing is to yield ourselves to the spirit. Why do we pray in the spirit? We pray in the spirit because God is a spirit, and anyone that worship in the new covenant worship in the spirit and the truth. And Jesus said this. I think Jesus said it at the well. The woman at the well. He met a woman, the Samaritan woman. The woman was say, "Where do we worship?" Said, uh, well, "Our father said we should worship at the mountain." You people say, "Sir, man." Jesus kind of said, "Jesus Christ told her." I said, "See, there, if you well, if you talk of if you talk of worship as as prescribed by the law, yes, Jews." Deserves Jews are the qualified paradigm for worship. The Jewish uh, uh, order, you know, by virtue of the of their election, I know that's a big concept, but by virtue of God, the election of Jews, that God had God showed interest in the Jews, and so they became the pattern for the Christian for the for the Christian journey. They became the symbol that we can for interpreting for interpreting the Christian journey. So that's what Jesus was saying, you know. But he said, but ultimately there was coming a time where it will not be a mountain. It will not be a, whether this mountain in, in Samaria or the mountain in Jerusalem. It will not be a function of worship in the spirit. If Jesus said that worship is no longer going to be an issue of Jerusalem, or not that it's going to be an issue of a mountain in, 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 in Samaria, then, and he now said, concluded that this now, this worship is going to be a worship of the spirit. Because God is a spirit. You will not worship in the mountain, you will not worship in Jerusalem. We will worship the true worship believers will worship the God in spirit and in truth. Who will you take? You will take Jesus Christ's words. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the New Testament. The foundation of the New Testament. You will take his words. His words are true. And that is why we pray in the Spirit, because it's already a command. You know, it's already given to Jesus has already given us the clue to assessing God in the new order. Jude 120 says, But beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude was the one that told us again on that clue. He said, he said, if you want to build yourself in your most holy faith, now we have faith. We have faith like Father Abraham. We have faith when we came to Christ. We have faith, you know, as we study the word of God. We have faith as we fellowship with believers. But Jesus also told us that another way to build your faith is by praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, if you build yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, there is a that the, 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 the implement for building of the infrastructure of your faith, of your conviction, 
of your solidifying your conviction in God does not just end in the day that you believed, in the day that you heard the word, in the day that you that you go, that you received a special revelation and it stuck with you and you said, mm, and you said, mm, and you made a deep, mm. no, it doesn't end there. You need to keep building. You need to keep building. You need to keep building. And the implement, the tool, the machinery for that building, for building that infrastructure of your faith, is praying in the Spirit. Is praying in the Spirit. You will be changing your faith. You will be changing the. You will be changing that building called your faith, if you do not engage in what we know today as praying in the Spirit. Romans eight twenty seven says. And he that searches the earth knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for God, for the saints rather, according to the will of God. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because the heart, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will. Now this is talking about the Spirit. He's talking about the, the Spirit, that the Spirit of God is the one that makes intercession. Remember I've said this before that. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ talked about the Holy Spirit. You know, as the one that would help, that would do a, multi, a multidisciplinary function in our lives. One of that functions is that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Now, the way when you talk about intercession, you're talking about somebody that stands in between. You know, somebody that knows, the, somebody that knows, uh, and in between, somebody that knows, he knows the, he knows the end of a thing, and he knows the process. He knows the process. Yeah, it's the same thing. He knows the process to he knows the process to get into the end of that thing. And that's also someone that knows the beginning of a thing, the process of a thing, and the end of that thing. He knows point A, point B, and point C. You that is at point A, you are disadvantaged because you can't see B and C. You that is at point B, you are disadvantaged because you can't see, you can't see C and you can't see A. But the Holy Spirit operates this beautiful horizon of wisdom, of insights, of 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 um, um of um, um, what was it called? Of um, of of forte, foreknowledge, you know, foreknowledge, you know, foreknowledge. No, he knows ahead, he knows before, and he knows what will be. So that's why the spirit stands comfortably in that place. He said, and why the spirit? He said, he searches the heart of the mind of God. The spirit of God does this. He searches the mind of God. He knows what the mind of God is. He knows what the mind of God, he knows what the plan of God is for you. He knows what the purpose of God is for us. He knows what the intent of God is for us. He knows what, what, what is our next point of engagement in life. The Spirit of God knows it. The Spirit of God is all-knowing. Many times we are caught in that trap of wanting to know. Want to, you know that's why people go to visit, visit globe, you know, those that operate globes and all of all those uh, 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 um, what is it called? Stars of the uh, signs of the sky, of, of the sky, of the planetary bodies, zodiac signs, and all, all that. People are trying to know. You know, that's actually, that's the measure of life. People are trying to know what next. People want to know the future. Somebody wants to predict the stock exchange. Somebody wants to predict the crypto, the crypto market. Somebody wants to predict the the, 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 the the financial business. Somebody wants to predict the next movement. Everybody wants to know what next. The best the best opportunity of life. There's nothing that has been able to. To, to, to give that precise, you know, precise, accurate uh, 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 prediction of what the next move you can make is. All of all that, they will, they will try, but no, 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 no. But the Holy Spirit has been given to us as that cheat code, as that cheat code, as that privilege in the heart of God to know. That is why we engage the Spirit. That is why we pray in the Spirit. Because when we pray in the Spirit, we are engaging the mind of God. The Spirit of God will bring all the things that are in God and bring it to the now for us. Hallelujah. Why do we also pray in the Spirit? Because when we pray, in Matthew 6, 7, it says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the Eden do. Mind you, I'm just talking about, I'm just talking, I'm just giving the pray in the Spirit a whole, from a holistic point of view. I'm not marrying down on, on gifts, especially, per se. But I'm talking about the, a, a, a new, the reality of, 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 our life in the, of our life in the new creation is that we move and walk and comport our spiritual our life in the spirit and praying the spirit you know is that is one of those privileges that god has given us he said but when you pray use not vain repetitions as Eden do for they think that they shall be heard for they are more speaking jesus christ of course was accusing the pharisees the leaders the, the religious leaders that uh, and then 
you also you, you, when you're talking about the Eden, you, talk, you refer to them as the Eden. You know, the the Eden talking about people who who seem to have think they have a, a sense a a people have a sense knowledge of God. Uh, they can. Have you seen people? People know the, there are people in this life. They are professors of the Bible. They are professors of thoughts of of, of of books of the Bible, of principles of the Bible. They are professors. They are people who know who know religion, you know. And I mean Christian religion, you know, to the minutest details, more than you do, more than I do, more than I can even talk about, you know. But the Bible says, but there is a differentiating factor. The vegetating factor is the spirit. Anyone that knows the scripture, knows the Bible, knows the word of God, knows the principles of the word of God, knows the, knows the characters, knows, the, knows the, the clauses and the phrases and, the, and all the principles of biblical interpretations and knows everything A to Z and does not know the spirit. It's as good. You know, but the person is she's cheated, is cut off from you, from a whole picture of the knowledge of God. So Jesus Christ was saying here that the way, as a matter of fact, to get to speak to far to God, to pray to God, it's not in using vain repetitions. You know, our words are our words, our words, how, how far can our words go? How far can our words take us? You know, how far can how far can we can we repeat a uh, 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 grammar to God? As a matter of fact, you know, the best of first of all, you must know that English language is not it, it's not the only language by which God hears prayers, because otherwise, what we say of other tribes. <laughs> And tongues on the face of the earth. So, no matter the vocabularies of, of, of words that we have, Greek or Hebrew, you know, that is not the clue, you know, to be able to pray or write. So, just was saying, so when you pray, use not dream repetitions. Do not be caught up in that. Do not be caught up in that. Because, okay, so, because I'm talking about the why. Because we don't want to be caught up in that, in that, um, uh, in that trap. In that trap of the of 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 trying to sound holier than thou, in that trap of trying to sound better than the person the person who, who doesn't have so much uh, 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 words or description. Some people can come and, and they can pray the Bible. They can pray. They can pray. They can link from Psalms to Proverbs, from Proverbs to Song of Solomon, from Song of Solomon to to. But <laughs> as beautiful as 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 memorizing scriptures and memorizing the Bible language is. You know, that is still, Jesus is telling us that is not the clue. The clue, you know, is not in you, it's not in the veracity of your capacity to, to, to be poetic and to say, don't be caught in love of all that. If that is what, if that is what you use to come to God, to prove a point, if that is what we use to come to God so that he can answer our prayer, then we want to bamboozle him with words. No, we have only but failed. We have only but failed because that is not the plan, nor the desire of God for us. The fullness, obtaining the best of God, is to pray, is to, is to, is to engage by praying in the Spirit. So how do we now pray in the Spirit? We pray in the Spirit, you know, first of all, you know, by yielding ourselves to the Lord. Uh, if I look, if I draw from that Trinitarian woman story again, you know, because she's a symbol of just Christ expressed um, just Christ expressed a prophetic ministry there in that in that in that, um, in that picture uh, of, of the woman at the well and uh, yeah a prophet is prophet just unveiled his prophetic ministry because of course he saw into the life of the woman spoke as a prophet and and just Christ also spoke you know also an apostolic Called to and also, which also led into an evangelistic uh, revival by that woman going to bring people in. So, humility and submission, you know, is one of the things, you know, that we that will be required if we are to be effective at praying in, in the spirit. Um, we do not come to God, you know, just like the principle generally, the principle of prayer is that we must come to God empty, we must come to God incapable of, our, of, of helping ourselves. We must come to God, the Father who can help us. Uh, if you can help yourself, you wouldn't need to pray. If you can, if you can solve all your life issues, you wouldn't need to, to, to. You wouldn't need anybody on the face of the earth. So, because we need God, 
I, I, because we need God not just also to solve problems, but <laughs> not even actually to solve them, but that is even secondary, but basically to advance in our life in God, um, then we must yield to Him. Yeah, the Bible says in 1 John 1 9, I think the scripture is very strong because if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praying the Spirit does not go without teaching ourselves. We don't just come, you know, especially now that we. Because we have received, because I'm talking about praying in the Spirit, and I know that I'm talking about those who, who, poss who possibly, I'm talking to those who uh, possibly already have that first uh, uh, principle. Uh, is it the first principle or the first uh, 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 um, gift of, of praying in tongues? You know, I'm not talking about praying in tongues, really. You know, but I know that you already have the gift of praying in tongues, which is one of the ways of praying in the Spirit. You know, but praying in tongues, sometimes let's not be confused with the, the number of times we're able to blab vocabulary. That's why sometimes some those religions that normally pray in spirit usually make mockery of 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 we the of the dimension of us, we the folks that pray, that use the spiritual language to pray. They make more of that most of we're just blabbing. They feel like we are just blabbing. They they assume that we're just blabbing. You know, um, they assume that we're just making, you know, insane, insane sound. Insane sound. But you see. I think one of the panacea to breaking that presumption or breaking that, that seeming trap is, is to understand that when we come to the God, we must come yielding. We must come empty. We must come humble. Uh, we don't just come with a braggadocious, uh, <laughs> if that English is correct, can put it in quotes, you know, that because we have it, we can just and just be blasting from all cylinders. No. There must be a humility in your heart. You know, blasting from all cylinders is not the issue. It is God. If God does not empower you, all your blasting is about empty symbols. That's what Paul was telling us. He said, if we make, if we make the largest sense, we will be like empty symbols. It must be springing from love. And love, loving God is yielding to Him. Loving God is confessing your sins. If you love God, you confess your sins and yield to His will in your heart. Amen. Amen. We must, we must get rid of sin. We must get rid of compromise. We must fall flat at the face of God. We must understand that we are coming to his table of mercy. We are coming to his table of mercy. Every time we are called to pray, you know, why you are, as before you begin opening your, open your mouth to start blabbing your, your spiritual language that has become a, 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 kind of, a, kind of, a kind of badge for you, you know, I think for you to remove that shoulder, for you to remove that, <laughs> that height, that prideful thing, I think if you fall, if you fall down, you know, if you fall down in your heart, you know, asking for God's mercy, then your prayer and will be, your prayer will be true, your prayer will be sincere, and your tongues will not be empty, will not be will not be will not be uh, uh, will not be empty and dry. Number two is in Ephesians five eighteen says, "And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit." <laughs> be not drunk. So the Bible is saying that we should not be uh, we should not be overtaken with drunkenness. Uh, of 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 alcohol, um, it will say, but be but be filled with the spirit. Now, being that's being drunk wine was just a symbol of indulgence. I think what the Bible is talking about is indulgence. It says, if you are going to if you are going to be effective in praying the spirit, then you must you must be free from indulgence in the flesh. You must be free from every form of intoxication or obsession. Distance yourself from uh, from from those things, every form of indulgence will um, will will will, will um, invalidate our praying the spirit. Will is it invalidate? Yeah, every form of indulgence, every form of excessive obsession would neutralize our life of praying in the spirit. If you want to be effective in praying the spirit, then you must stay away from uh, indulgence. And indulgence is in different forms and formats. Anything that can dry, anything that can, any, any obsession that can, any obsession can dry up our life in the spirit. And when you dry up your life, you cannot pray. You'll be ineffective. Effective praying in the spirit, it comes, you know, as we are, as we, as we, as we, um, as we, as we distance ourselves from, from excessive obsessions of the flesh, indulging the flesh. Indulging the flesh so so much to the point that there's no there is no there's no boundary. Every believer has boundary. Wherever you do, wherever you go, 
if you are among sinners, there's bound. Jesus Christ was with was with the Bible says Jesus Christ was born wine by Bible. Jesus Christ had boundary. That boundary is in your heart. That man, you know that this is how far you can go in this social gathering. This is how far I can go with this social activity. This is how far I can go with this with this stuff. You get me? So with this how far I can go with, with this, if sometimes I have personal certain passions. You know that takes or stick for so much that when you now for when you now need that to pray, you can't you can't pray. Why you're you're dried up? That situation, that's that that activity has dried you up. So begin to identify them. That's what the Bible means. It says not drunk man. Talking about indulgence, intoxication, excessive indulgence of the flesh. If you want to be effective, then you can you have to distance yourself from that. We must yieldfully yield to the Spirit and an increase self actualization in prayer. Romans eight twenty seven says. He that says the heart know where the mind and the spirit is because he is making intercession for all the saints according to the will of God, which a scripture which we have read before. So, so we, 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 we are not trying to actualize something by ourselves when we are praying the spirit. That must be a, a strong paradigm in our minds that praying the spirit is not trying to actualize something. As a matter of fact, when you pray in the spirit, um, whether, by, whether by praying on, in understanding, whether by praying with the word of God, whether by praying in spiritual language, just yield yourself to God. You know, along the journey of the prayer, yes, there may now be a, 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 a clean direction. We just pray. We just yield. And that's why sometimes I like those, um, I like certain, certain prayer, certain prayer, where we're in prayer meetings, and then there's avenue, avenue is given for us to pray, to pray the spirit for say like an hour with no, with no prayer points called. Yeah, so what you are doing in that moment is you are just yielding to God, you are just in spirit. You are just, you are, you are just making yourself a vessel for use. You are, the, you are the praying vessel. You are the praying vessel. God is the answering vessel. The spirit is the one orchestrating the, orchestrating the, the, uh, the, the, um, the elements or the, the needs of that space of time. You are not determining the, the, the you are not the one you are not the one calling the shots. Yeah, you're not the one calling the shots. I think that's a better way to, uh, to say that. <sighs> Another way of praying the spirits, uh, you know, is not narrowing down, is um, is taking advantage of the spirit's provision or of gift of praying in tongues or which we know as praying as being a, 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 a no language. Eh? Or pray in the spirit. Paul said this in First Corinthians 14 that 14 verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understanding him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh means. This actually this is our justification for praying in an unknown language. We do not, we are not of the set that believe, I am not of the set that believe that praying in, in, in supernatural language has gone with the apostles. No, I believe that praying with the apostles continues to today. Because Paul said, or the apostle told us that, either speaking to unto, speak unto men, but unto God. And I want to speak to God. And I want to speak to God because God is a spirit. So no man may understand me. I may not even understand myself. My mind is unfruitful. That's what I say. But I know that in the spirit, I speak at miseries. So after I've observed all of all, of all the earlier principles that I've given, when I begin to pray in the Spirit, I know for sure that I'm praying to God. And I take advantage of this tool, of this gift, of this privilege that we have in the Spirit. We all take advantage because it gives us there's an acceleration in the life of the Spirit that we cannot get. And I'm speaking from experience. You know, also speaking from what the Word of God says. You know, that's you will can never get to until we cultivate praying in supernatural language or praying in an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. Because we can we keep speaking misery to God. If in verse 14 of that same, in verse 14 of chapter 14 again of 1 Corinthians, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, even though my understanding is unfruitful. And is that not what your is that not your primary desire? That is, our, that is what, we, that's what is the primary desire. This is the clue. This is the code. God is the spirit. Worship in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in an unknown tongue. Your spirit will be praying. So you are, 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 you are vibrating. You are, you are shaking up your spirit. You are shaking up docility from your spirit. You are shaking up idleness from your spirit. You are shaking off, 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 off redundancy from your spirit. You are shaking off. Of, of, um, uh, 
of weights, weights of death, weights of, 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 of death, the falling, the, the, the after effects of the falling, so we shake all of all these things off when we pray. Why, why is it that when you pray in the spirit, joy springs forth out of you? Why is, that, why is that experience so? Why is it that experience so that when you are battered left, right, center in life, and you have nothing to you have nothing to say. As a matter of fact, in that state of, of batter of a battered mind, you can't even go to God in a current prayer, no matter how best in grammar or in spoken language that you are you have. The only two you have is to pray in the spirit. And we thank God for that New, New Testament reality. Apostle Paul said again in verse 15 of him, said, What is it then? I will pray with my spirit, I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with my spirit, I will also sing with my understanding. So that is beautiful. You can sing with your spirit. You can sing with understanding. You can pray with your spirit. You can pray with understanding. All key, the general key is pray in the spirit. For either pray in the spirit edified himself. And that is the call of the new covenant life. We must pray in the spirit. Some people say that praying in the spirit has gone. Without. Some people say praying in the spirit is just reading the word of God. Well, Praying the Spirit, you know, it, it's not just for me. I don't think it's just not, it's just reading the Word of God. Reading the Word of God has its place. Praying in the praying also with the Word of God in the Spirit, you know, as as under the under the avenue of praying in understanding is also key, you know. But praying in the Spirit, you know, is is, is a reality where you are and you know that it is not of yourself. It is of the Spirit. The Spirit is the one. The Spirit is the one. The Spirit is the one, you know, uh, 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 the Spirit is the one ignite, igniting this engine. The Spirit is the one engineering this fire, you know, firing this, this cylinder. The Spirit is the, is the one, the Spirit is the one uh, 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 keeping this engine running. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I, I trust the Lord that, you know, we would continue, you know, in, uh, in our disciplines of praying the Spirit, you know, not just, not just as a, not as a corporate, not as a corporate call, you know, but also as a, not as a corporate thing, but as a, as a, as a life, as a nature, as a life, as a nature, as our purpose and as our call. Your, your life will take a tremendous, a tremendous turn. Your life will take a tremendous turn if praying in the spirit is your practical reality. And uh, I trust the Lord that uh, that life. You know, and a stirring has been created in us so that we can, can live in this robustness of life that God has given to us. And this avenue that he has given us to reach out to him by in the spirit. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the word this morning. It's my prayer that we will not just be hearers, but we'll be doers of the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now it's time to give our offering and our tithe. As usual, do my drum rolls. So yes, so if you're giving an offering or a tithe this morning, please find the details on the screen. Um, the account details while we you know, bow our heads and our heart in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We would always begin with thanks. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver, and a cheerful giver is someone who truly gives from their heart. Because you, you desire that you know the giving comes from inside of us. And Lord, with all of our cheerful heart this morning, we give to you and we say thank you. Thank you for providing bread to the eater. Thank you for giving seed to the sower. Thank you for the opportunity to to love on you through you know our seeds, through you know our offerings and our tithes. Thank you for your hand we've seen your hand in the year the bible speaks of isaac in the year of famine and he sowed in that land lord is we, we, we acknowledge that everything that we have it's not it's not because we're we're anything but lord is all your provision 100 percent the hand of the almighty we bless you father because we know that indeed our offering and our thanks are accepted and you know the a beautiful act of worship to you this morning lord in jesus name as we give amen Amen. Yes. So on to the announcements for the week. Um, every Sunday, first of all, we've got Church on Air by 7.30, which you already know because you're here. And then we've got our physical service, which is the Present Truth Service, 10.30 a.m. at the Church Auditorium, 7B, The Rock Drive, 
of Priscilla Jerusimi Eti Nikki Face One. We surely would love for you to worship with us physically. We'd love to give you a hug and would love to have you join with us. Um, every Wednesdays we fast as a as a church. You know, we fast through the day and uh, we have prayer points released on the church platforms um, to guide us through the day. So if you're not following us on social media yet, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, if you're not subscribed to this channel, if you're not on a church WhatsApp platform, you are wrong. So do us right and um, you know follow us, you know subscribe and um, join our platform so you can get all the information, all the prayer points on Wednesdays and the guide for the week. Um, also, in every Thursday, we gather by 6 p.m. for Epignosis, which is a study of God's Word um, at the Church Auditorium, 7B, The Rock Drive, or Bissola Durasini Eti, Lekki Face. We would we'll love to have you this Thursday. Um, thank you for joining with us. Anyways, today we, we're happy to have you join with us. And we hope to see you again, same time, next week. Yeah. Love you. TGC loves you. <laughs> Bye.